Hi everyone, it's the most glorious, glorious summer day here in the uh, in the North Pennines. It's a real day to be outside. So that's what I've been doing this morning. I've been painting outside. But this afternoon I wanted to show you what my next project is going to be. Annabelle Duke um, via Fairy Chic Emporium, Paula Rolls at Fairy Chic Emporium, have sent me another tester pot of their modern finish paint to do a review to make a video and, and review it as a goal. They've sent me a glorious colour, it's called Wisteria. It's kind of smoky and grey, pinky, lilac. It's just it's it's lovely. I can't wait to get going with it and see see what it looks like. Um, and the piece that I've chosen to do is this uh, stag stag minstrel piece. Originally, I think it's been a, a television stand when televisions used to be that, that sort of size. And in fact, you can still get them that size and I'm sure they're adequate. But now we tend to have great big cinema screens in our home. And this has been made redundant along the way, I think. Um, it's got the one drawer uh, and it's got this shelf in here that I guess your video recorder in those days used to, used to sit on. Um, of course... I want to repurpose it completely um, and so I'm going to put a couple of baskets in there which I think when it's all painted will, will look nice. I want to leave the top as, as plain wood, sand it right down as far as I can get it to leave good wood um, and, and hem foil it. And I also want to do the same with this surface here because these baskets are very scratchy. I imagine with a bit of weight in them, when, you, when you're pulling that in and out, I don't think there's any paint that would withstand that. So I think the best thing to do is to um, sand that back as well and then poil it. Everything else that you can see is going to be painted out of this 150ml sample pot. So wish me luck. I think, I think I'll have enough. I'm sure I will. Uh, all I've done to it so far is I've, I took the drawer out, I painted the drawer inside because I, I think it just makes it nice and clean and fresh. Still needs another coat as you can see. Um, and that's it. We're pretty much ready to get washing, sanding and ready to paint. So I'll catch up with you again when I'm about to start painting. Hi again, so we're back with the stag, little stag unit that I showed you before and I said I was going to sand it. Um, this stag furniture is so well made, it's really lovely. Um, so I haven't painted, I painted the draw liner so when you pull it out it looks nice and fresh um, which is what you want if you're going to be putting your nice clothes in it. Um, and I painted up to the dovetails there. Uh, with that. You can see this has been sanded down and all that very dark finish that Stag put on all their things actually reveals this lovely solid wood underneath. So I've done all the entire unit I'm just going to start painting on this drawer front now. Now I don't, I want a nice clean edge there so what I'm going to do is just pop a piece of um, the masking tape over it just to keep it clean and tidy. New masking tape. Oops, I'm sorry. So what you do is just put it just as the drawer liner meets up with the, the draw front and that way then you'll, you'll ensure that you have a nice crisp line with your painting down there. Same on the other side. It doesn't have to be this wide unless you're a very messy painter. Just what I have to hand.
So that's that to give us a tidy edge. So it's time to get painting. As I said before, I'm going to be using the Annabelle Duke Modern Finish. Um, and all I would, I mean, it's, it looks like a gorgeous colour, but all I would say at this stage is I'm not absolutely totally in love with the label. I think, I think it looks like something I could print out at home. It doesn't look that professional, really. Um, however, we're not here to judge the label, really. That was an aside. Let's see how it. Oh, there's no seal inside. That's good. I was thinking there'd be a seal and they're always so messy to get off. Um, but no, there's no seal. The lid comes off easily. And it's a lovely wide mouth to get your brush, your paintbrush into. Some samplers, sample tester pots, they're so narrow that you've got to decant it into something else to use a larger brush. And by the time you've decanted it, you've lost some in the bottom of your pot. So this is this is marvellous. I'm really pleased. So yes, I know I'm only using a chip brush. I know that's not what we all advise that you do. I have got posh brushes. I've got Style Meester and all sorts of lovely, lovely purdy brushes and whatever. And every time I come back to this, I just like it. So bear with. So you want to dip your paint in just, just that much. You don't need any more than that. And let's see. Oh, that is so smooth. So, so smooth. And this is allowing me to go back, back over it now without pulling up any any texture from it drying and it really is a warm day here today my thermometer thing weather thing is saying that it's 27 degrees outside in the shade I actually believe it so this is quite a good test for for this paint so same again not too much on your brush and then just paint away look at the coverage of that for one coat that's quite incredible. Just a wee bit more. Because now we want to do the do this part. Do the edges that we've just uh, taped off. And now this top part. We all have our individual ways of getting paint onto bits of furniture. I like doing narrow edges like this. I don't, it doesn't slop down either side or whatever and I feel very much in control of it. I'm sure you have your own way of doing it. So just, have I done both hands? No, just the same to do. So there we are, that's one coat of Annabelle Duke, Annabelle Duke Modern Finish in Wisteria. It was going on to not the darkest of, of um, substrates, but certainly, you know, a darkish wood. And look at that coverage, look at that colour as well. I'm, I am really impressed. I loved the way it painted on, it felt silky and smooth and very forgiving about going back over areas. It's I'm delighted with that. So what I'm going to do now is carry on with the rest of the unit, painting it where where I want the paint to be, obviously, and leaving the the other the two flat parts of it to be hand boiled later. Uh, and I'll come back to you when I've done one coat everywhere, and we'll see just what coverage we've got, how much paint we've used, etc. So we're painting this stag uh, little unit with the Annabelle Duke Modern Finish in the colour Wisteria, which is gorgeous. Um, and I've masked off uh, with a bit of newspaper all of the, the top and this shelf here, uh, both of which are going to be natural wood and hemp oiled. Uh, and I just don't want to accidentally get any 
any paint onto them. It's just just easier if that doesn't happen. So let's take a look at this side. This is one coat and I put very thin coats on. Um, ordinarily with paint I put three or four coats on, sometimes even more. And I can't believe the coverage I've got with this with just one coat. It's quite incredible. And yes, it is a lovely colour. It's just one thing I wanted to draw your, draw your attention to. Just along here and there, there's what appears to be a bit that I've missed with the paintbrush. That's actually not the case. I've, I've tried to fill that in as much as I can, but it's it's actually a hole really. It's where they've presumably joined these two pieces together and just haven't clamped them tight enough, I think. So I'm going to have to put a bit of filler in there because I just can't live with that. Um, so that's going to slow the process down a little bit because I'll have to fill it, dry it, sand it and then go back over it. Um, but apart from that, um, uh, with regards to the paint, fantastic. Loved putting it on, it was a joy to put on and the coverage is just amazing. So I'll see you again when I've got two coats on and we'll reassess whether it needs another one or not. Oh incidentally let me just show you how much paint I've used out of this 150ml pot. So as you can see I haven't used that much and there is still loads to go. It really makes sense having this size of a sample pot it's it, there's enough paint in there to really do a project um, and probably still have some left to be honest so yeah I'll meet up with you again after I've got this filled dried sanded and the second coat on all over hi there welcome back where uh, I, I told you I'd bring you back after I'd done the second coat and we'd have a look at it see what coverage we've got see if we like it what's what's going on so it's had it's had two thin coats now and if, if I just show you this side the coverage is gorgeous it feels lovely but I think it would just benefit from one more thin thin coat if we have a look here at this um, the Annabelle Duke modern finish I'll show you how much I've used in the two coats so we're about I don't think we're halfway done bit light of halfway really so it does give excellent coverage for very little paint when you bear in mind that I've also I've done the sides I've done the front and I've also done inside here and the back which also as you can see needs a, needs another coat the thing that's most obvious I guess is that I've got a white patch here in the middle now I did do the draw entirely with the wisteria but I thought it looked, I must say this colour is more strident, it's a stronger colour than I thought it was going to be and it kind of took me a bit by surprise really and there just looked to be too much of the, the lilac-y colour without it being broken up at all. So having painted the whole draw twice with the wisteria I then decided that I was going to do a decoupage on the draw front. Um, so, as you know, if you're going to do a decoupage, you really should try and make the, the background, the bit that it's going to go on to, a light colour, so the light shines from behind it. Now, so I didn't have an endless supply of tissue that I could use, actually, for this that would go with it, but in the end I opted for this one which will go along there. So that's the theory. Might need a bit of touching up, touching in once I've done it, but that's what it's going to look like. And I think it'll, I think it'll be nice. I think it'll break up that colour a little bit on the front. So I'm going to go now and put this on. You're going to come with me um, and then we'll see, see, how, see how that looks. See you soon. Hi, uh, right, I'm going to address the decoupage on the front of this drawer. For those of you that haven't been following along the, the makeover of this little stag unit, I painted it all in this lovely lilac colour. And then when I assembled it with drawback in, I thought it 
And I thought it looked a little bit plain and there just looked to be too much of this colour without a break in it at all. So I decided to repaint this central section uh, with a very light coloured paint um, because if you're going to be applying decoupage you really need something light underneath it to reflect the light up so you can see your, see your decoupage in all its glory. Now this is um, tissue paper that I bought from Zazzle zazzle.co.uk if you're over here in, in Great Britain and zazzle.com if you're in the States. They have some fabulous papers, really, really lovely. Be warned, you have to buy them in twos, you can't buy them singularly and it is a very seductive sight. You just think, oh well I'll have two of those and two of those and then when you look at what your basket adds up to, it's like, oh no, what can I live without? Um, however, the day the postman brings it is a very, very exciting day. Anyway, I've got this piece that I've chosen. It's got a uh, legible script on it and just some sort of background hazy roses that I, I, I think will look nice. To be honest, I didn't have a huge selection to choose from. I've just put another order in, um, but that isn't here yet. So out of the ones I had left, I think this one is, is just fine. I think I think it'll do the job nicely. Now I've cut it out to roughly what I think, it's obviously too wide here, not by much because that lilac line is inside where the where it needs to go. But I think it's just a millimetre or so too wide and if, if I get this end exactly on it you can see that it looks like it's been cut short. It's been cut at that for a reason and that's because during the process of doing the uh, De decoupage this tissue actually stretches so let's get on with that then and see what we have to do for these larger if, if this was only a, fr a fraction of this size I wouldn't be about to use the this technique that I'm going to show you now I would just literally put the decoupage gel down put my tissue paper over it get some cling film and straighten it out but this I think it's just on the cusp, it's just large enough for me to employ the technique that I'm going to show you today. So get your, t your tissue the right way around, that's the way I want it to be, right sides looking up at me. So take it off, turn it over so the wrong side is looking up at you and place it onto a piece of plastic. Now this plastic isn't anything special. Um, it's, it's just regular plastic. This happened to be from an A3 poly pocket that I cut up just to give me some pieces of plastic to work on. Um, if you don't have that or, or are doing a much larger piece, you can use cling film, straighten it out, and you can use cling film for this technique. So the first thing to do then, bearing in mind, as I say, it's wrong side facing, facing up. It's got a little fan brush and you really do need a fan brush because you're going to be applying water to this and it tears so so easily so gentle hand get some water and starting from the center just brush it out towards the edges now you can see the stretch in that paper so just take your hand gently just pull it so it goes straight and then keep working along. See again we've got some slack in there. And when I say pull the edge gently, I mean it's, yeah, please be gentle. This is wet tissue paper. But you do want to get rid of all those wrinkles as they occur. So there, that's great. Now we've just got the other the other side to do. Same same process from the centre out. Don't be afraid of using too much water. Better too much than too little.
It's much easier to get rid of the bubbles at this stage than it is when they're actually applied to the piece. So just go over it, make sure that you push all those bubbles as gently as you can towards the sides. That looks pretty good. Looks okay to me. So I'll just leave that for a second while we apply a coat of watered down glue. This could be Mod Podge, it could be PVA with water in it, it could be any, any um, decoupage medium or glue that you like really. So we're going to paint this onto the area that we're going to apply the decoupage to. Try not to get too much outside the area but certainly cover the area quite well. Quite generous with it. I mean, once it's on, you can always go back in under the edges and apply a little bit more if you need to. But I think that's okay. It's looking okay. So this is where the magic happens. Pick up your tissue and turn it round so the right side is facing you, and then we begin to to place it. Try and get your corner. On your corner, it's quite hard to see this. I think that's right. And just place it down. And then run your hands along, try and get rid of as much spare water and everything else and flatten that decoupage down. I think I'll put this on wrong. Oh no, I know, that's all right. That's that. Right, so what we have showing here is a good point actually. Because I painted inside the area, I've now got this mauve showing through. So it's not um it's not showing the decoupage right to the end of the of the corner. I class that as a mistake. Um I'm not altogether happy with it. I should have painted white right to right to the edge there. But anyway, that's we're looking at the technique more than anything here. And that's the technique. It's got it's beautifully flat. And then take your your fan brush with your glue that's watered down and it's essential that this is watered down at this stage because it will tear it. Plenty on there because you don't want it to tear. And just give it a coat of coat of glue. I, I did some projects a while back where I forgot I forgot this stage completely. I forgot to put glue on. Um, <laughs> put them on the radiator to dry, and when I went back, <laughs> all the decoupage was just lying on the floor. Uh, I just completely forgotten to glue it on. So that is that beautifully smooth decoupage over a large area done with no grief whatsoever. So I hope you'll be able to employ this method. It's I think it's loads easier than, than the um, putting glue on, then your tissue, then using the cling film to straighten it out. And you do get a truly smooth wrinkle free finish. Thank you. See you soon. Hi everyone. It's another glorious, absolutely glorious day up here in, uh, well, in Cumbria. I live on the border of Cumbria and Northumberland. Uh, it's not very often this far north we see <coughs> a sunny day. Never mind this whole string of sunny days we've had really makes you feel like getting out there. Mind you, as soon as you do, you want to come in. So, Anyway, we're here to talk about this piece of furniture, which I have painted using the Annabelle Duke Modern Finish. I've used the sample size pot, which is 150 mils, and uh, costs 7 95 For what you get out of it, 7 95 is nothing. I mean, 
Let's just show you what's left in this in this tub. Look, there's half of it left. And I have completely finished now this little stag side unit. I'll turn it around so it's a really good look at the, at the finish that you get with this paint. I know you can't feel it, I know that. I know you're only looking at a video. But it's just so smooth. There, there isn't a brush stroke to be seen. Not, not even one stray brush so, stroke. I mean, when it says self-leveling, it really is self-leveling. And I would imagine it's a lovely paint to use for a beginner because it's, it's got quite a long open time. You can keep going back over your brush strokes for quite a while. To, to make sure you've got the paint exactly where you want it, etc, etc. Oh, my dog wants to join in. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. This is three very thin coats on here. Um, and it's, it's looking great, I think. If you remember, we uh, decoupaged the drawer, the drawer front, part of the drawer front. Um, and this, it's a piece of stag minstrel. And for those of you familiar with Stag Minstrel, they always have a sort of circular hoop that's the handle. I thought, because we jollied this up a bit, it needed something a bit more fashionable. So I've just put on a plain wooden knob that I have painted in the same Annabelle Duke Modern Finish paint, the Wisteria colour. And just for the sake of completeness, that's the other side. I'm really, really pleased with it. Now... We did say all along that we were going to leave the top and this shelf in here just plain wood. Um, for one thing, I want to put some baskets in here. And I think that any sort of, of, of paint or, or whatever would really struggle with having rough baskets being pulled in and out over them. The, the baskets I've chosen... Um, I mean, they're not sharp, but they do, you know, this bit here, it would catch on your paint. So I've decided to, you can feel it there already. So I've decided to hem poil this piece and this piece. And the other thing I wanted to say to you was, I'm not, well, I am surprised at the colour this has dried. It's, it's considerably lighter than I thought it was going to be. Not as dusky. So I'm tossing up the idea in my mind. It, this paint, this modern finish, it doesn't need any finishing. It, that, this is it done. You don't need to wax it. You don't need to varnish it. You don't need to put hem oil on it. You don't need to do anything to it. It is finished and durable as the day is long. But for the aesthetics of the thing, for how I want to see it. It's just a tad on the bright side, just need to bring him down a little bit. So I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to hemp oil it or whether I'm going to put an antiquing wax over it, just to, just to bring it that one tone down. However, I haven't decided, but when I have, I'll show you the finished piece. But the top and that shelf, they are definitely going to have um, hemp oil on them. I'm actually using Fusion um, hemp oil and so you can just swap. you can do this with a brush with a rag with your hands if you haven't got either of the above um, just put some on your cloth and swipe it across go with the grain I think is always is always the best but you don't have to you're just getting it on there I mean look at that it's gorgeous isn't it it's really lovely Sure that you do the edges as well. A little bit more. You can't overdo this. The wood will only take what the wood needs. Um, so you, you actually can't overdo it. And if you were to tip the whole bottle on here, it wouldn't make any difference as to how much the wood needs. You could go back next day and take off the excess. But look how that's coming up, it's beautiful isn't it? 
That was worth all the sanding. So she who didn't do the sanding. <laughs> So there we are, that's the top. It might need another coat, this feels particularly dry. Um, but I'll leave that for about half an hour, see how much has soaked in, see if it feels rough and needs another coat, which I suspect it will do. I'll get this, this shelf hemp oiled as well. We'll have another look at it and see what we think with regards to, uh, to either hemp oiling the, the paintwork, dark waxing it or, or what. But that's as easy as hemp, hemp, applying hemp oil is. Couldn't be easier, could it? Couldn't be simpler. Okay, I'll see you in a little while with the completed piece. Hello again. This is the final part of the uh, review I'm doing for Annabelle Duke Modern Finish Paint. Um, you may recall that Paula at Fairy Chic Emporium sent me this sample pot size to um, try, uh, make a video and tell you lot exactly what I think about it, good or bad. Well, I have to say that so far, the only thing I've found slightly wrong with it, in my opinion, is I don't like the label. And I, I really dislike all this writing that's on there in text so small I've had to get my magnifying glass out to read it I mean that it's it could do with being a bit larger that's all I'm saying but with regards to the paint I have absolutely no problems with it it's it's a lovely paint I've put three um, very very thin layers on this and I've got fantastic coverage and there is not a brush mark in sight there really isn't. I don't know what you'd have to do to this paint to get it to leave brush marks. It, it's the easiest paint to work with. It's just a joy. You can you can go back over it and smooth it out if you see, you know, a little drip or a run or something at the corner. You, you've got time. It would appear a, l a longer opening time than you do have uh, open time than you do have with with some other paints to sort of correct things that you. You look up and you see a mistake or whatever, you can go back over it and smooth that out. For for this piece, uh, when it was finished, I felt that this wisteria colour, which looks gorgeous in the pot, had dried slightly lighter than I had in my mind. Um, and so you, with with the modern finish, you don't need any primer. It's a self priming paint and you don't need any top coat of any sort. Once you finish painting it, that's it. It's durable. After five to seven days of curing, you can wash it, do what you want with it. It, it won't shift. Um, but I felt purely for the aesthetics that I wanted to knock it down a tone. And so because I had the hemp oil out to do the top and the shelf, I would just hemp oil the whole piece, which is what I've done. And, and it has knocked it back uh, a shade and I'm quite happy with that now. You see also the the top here that I, that I hemp oiled. Uh, this is a piece of stag minstrel furniture, which if you remember when we started was very dark. Uh, sanded all of the, the original finish off um, and given it a coat of hemp oil, which I also have done here on this shelf which i think contrasts nicely with with the color you may also recall that we did um a video a little snippet video on applying large pieces of of uh, tissue to furniture and that's that's gone on well it's slightly more creamy uh, than i thought and so the original basket liners that i had which were actually white and pink. These ones just don't go with the whole thing, so I've taken them off. And actually, I like these baskets without a liner because they're pretty similar colour to the um, to the hemp oiled pieces. The original drawer furniture that was on there, I've got rid of that and sort of modernised it a little bit with um, a couple of coats of the wisteria, the Annabelle Duke modern 
modern finish. I'm, I am really, really impressed with this paint. I, I would really, it has my recommendation. And there's a whole list of things that you can, that you can paint with it. In fact, I don't know what you can't paint with it. I'm going to have to revert to a piece of paper because I simply couldn't remember them all. Um, let me tell you all that I know about it. You can use the paint inside and outside with no top coat at all, uh, which, is, which is great for all your garden furniture, conservatory furniture, whatever. I, as I say, I've achieved this with three. I coat with very thin coats um, and sometimes I need five, six coats to, to cover something. With this, this is three coats and I am delighted with the finish. Excellent coverage. And I've used, I would say, about half the pot of this sample size. Yeah, I'd say it's about half. The other thing that I would like to say is that I like the way the top doesn't seem to get too sticky. You can get in and out of it all, all the time. And that the mouth of the sample pot is really nice and big. You can get a good two inch brush in there. Um, so you don't have to compromise yourself with a, with a smaller brush. Um, yeah, as I say, excellent coverage. Definitely, I can't argue with that. Absolutely no brush marks. I don't, I just don't know what you'd have to do to get brush marks. They just don't, don't seem to appear. And the paint, yep, it does go a long way. This is a 150ml pot, and I'd say I've used 75ml on this. I mean, it's, it goes a long way. Um, and it cures in five to seven days. It says that it covers most other paints, including weathered finishes and varnish. I haven't tried that, I can't comment, but everything else they've said is true, so I'm, you know, I'm all for believing it. The good thing about it is, even with all this durability, you can still wash your brushes and everything else out with water. It's a water clean up, good and quick. And it says it can be used directly onto plastic, wood, metal, including radiators, which is quite interesting because it must be able to withstand the heat of the radiators. Plastic coated UPVC, which is your uh, front, some, some of your front doors and your double glazing stuff. So that's good to know that it covers that. Uh, brick, masonry, fiberglass, terracotta, stone, plaster, MDF, tiles, melamine, galvanized steel, and copper. Well, that's kind of everything. <laughs> that's just anything you might ever want to paint, you can paint with modern finish. <laughs> you know, that's more succinct, isn't it? Um, however, prep is important, and prep's important for any sort of paint that you use. Don't be, don't be conned by these people. Oh, you don't need to do any prep. You just put it on, a couple of thick coats, and it'll be fine. It won't be. It might look fine. It might even stay fine for a little while, but you will get no longevity that way. You really need to prep your pre, pre, prep. Ooh, a lot of peas there. Prep your piece properly. <laughs> um, and I have done various videos on my page of uh, of how to prep your furniture in advance of coming along to paint it. So, what's my overall review? It's an excellent paint. I enjoyed using it. It wasn't tiresome to use there was no troubles with it it's not so thin that it runs it's not so thick that it's tacky it's it's just a great paint and yes i would heartily recommend it so thanks to annabelle duke for bringing out modern finish wonderful paint i'll be using it again um thanks to paula at fairy chic emporium for sending me the paint to review if you're looking for a local stockist to me, uh, Fiona Foster at Tallulah Ravens Emporium in Brampton is a Annabelle Duke stockist, so you can pop along there. She's got some pieces in stock, I think, that she's painted with it, so you can see it, how, it's, how it feels. Um, and go on, get going, you'll love it. <laughs> 
I'm going to take some glamour shots of this little beauty, which we'll put along at the end of the video for you to see. Um, I've had fun. I hope you've enjoyed watching the progress of this little thing. Thank you for enduring with me and hope to see you again soon. Bye.